So let's move into Dear Prudence, the next song. All right, first of all, this has finger picking, and the story goes that when they were in India, Donovan, the singer-songwriter Donovan, was there, and he taught the Beatles how to do this finger picking. Huh. And when you listen to Dear Prudence, you could tell John Lennon is still kind of shaky. And the reason, I believe that the reason, and I, because I've experienced this myself with my own music, when I've, I, I have a tendency to write songs that are too hard for me to play, mm -hmm. so I have to really, really work mm -hmm. at them. And I once wrote this song, recently wrote this song called This Could Be Your Dream, and it was so hard to play that I had to play it really slow. Huh. But that lit, actually, it, was, it worked for the song itself to be really slow. And this song, you could tell this song would have been faster if he knew how to finger pick better, but you could tell it sounds like he's, he's a little bit shaky. Yeah. And we hear the end of USSR. And Now we have double guitars, so it has a chorusing effect. But it's very slow. It sounds... You can tell that he's he's working, you know. Now, doubling of guitar, is it doubling of his, or is that Harrison yeah, coming no, in? No, no, that's probably him, because, again, they were kind of separate at this point. And, okay. and probably Harrison wouldn't have wanted to learn... He Harrison never finger-picked, really, so I think that oh. he didn't want to learn how to play play that just so we can have an overdub when, you know, they had an 8-track recorder by this time. Oh, okay. They it to overdub. All right. What they did was they probably overdubbed it, and to save space, um, they did something called bouncing, where you, you the second track you've recorded, you now uh, mix it together, mix the two separate tracks onto a third track. All right, now you have the two guitars mixed onto a third track, and you erase the original too. I so see. So now you have space. Okay. Again. This, these were like fail-safe devices for recording engineers. Okay. Uh, uh, what, by the way, what's, uh, what's the background on the song, Prudence? Who? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, uh, Prudence was uh, Mia Farrah's sister. And, uh, you know, she was, uh, you know, they had this whole coterie of jet setters that, you know, were friends, that were celebrities. You mentioned like Jane that. Asher and all, all sorts of people yeah, along the way. Yeah, like I said, Donovan. God, God knows who was there. I'd like to, to know, like, you yeah. know. How, how big this thing was, how many people were out there seeing the Maharishi. In any case, uh, uh, Prudence Pharaoh, Mia Pharaoh's sister, uh, became so obsessive with the meditations that she would never come out. Oh. She just sat there and meditated, you know. And so Lennon, you know, wrote this song, like, come on, you know, oh. loosen up, come on, play, yeah, with, play take, with those take Beatles. Take a little bite know? out of life, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, good. So, um, I teach that the forms here, the cowboy chords, what I call the cowboy chords, D, the B shape, and the F shape. Okay. You can truncate them to three notes. So you get D, B, and F, all right? And the same goes for minor chords, all right? Minor, minor, and minor, all right? There are three different shapes. In this case, I got this from D minor, from B minor, and from F minor. Okay. And again, this all three notes of the entire chord. Okay. You don't need any more notes. So now he starts off. Okay, so we get the F shape up here. Uh -huh. And it's resonating with the open strings because this is the key of D and we have an A and a D in the uh, oscillating bass works fine. Now, as a pedal point, these two notes work very nicely. This is a D, this is a C. So we get a very nice sonority with those pedal points. When you say pedal point? A pedal point is a, a repeating bass line. Okay. All right. And in this case, we have two pedal points. That's a rare thing. But the way the structure works, it, it, you know, these, these pedal point notes sit very well against the chords. I mean, you could do chords that it won't work with. All right. Well, that, that doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. you know? But if you do the right chords, it's very pretty. Yeah. All right. So we have a D chord, and if uh, technically here's here's where it comes from from F F G A B C D. Okay. Then we have a C chord going down a whole step. Mm -hmm. Now we're using the D shape, 
All right, but we're coming up, so here's our root D, E, F, G. Okay. So we have D, C, G. Now he's using the F shape again to get uh, an A chord with... Now what makes that so particularly poignant is this A note belongs to the A chord, obviously enough, but the D note is the suspended fourth happening in the bass. It's the suspension. Okay. All right, so our intro is D, C, G, A, C. But the C chord here, I'm using now the B shape, so up a half step to C. But I've, again, this is different. I've got an A in the bass. So technically, this is an A minor 7 chord because I've got A in the bass stating, and I've got the D, which is known as the, um, well, it's the ninth, it's in, in the bass. But see, when we're set up with this oscillating bass, our ear can, can explain away all these weird notes that are happening. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, get into the body of the song. So just a review real quick. We got D, C, G, A, C, C, D. And by the way, this is all mixolydian, the whole progression there. Huh. And also the song itself is mixolydian. So now, Lennon, Lennon was, was, you know, while other guys were doing this on a D chord, Harrison song yet, but I needed someone to love you all the wrong that I be thinking of. Right? Um, but Lennon was doing stuff in those days, but I'm talking about these early days like this. Nobody else did anything like that no. on the D chord. There were all these little tiny D chord tricks, but Lennon just took it, woo, took huh. it a whole universe. Was that, I mean, is that sort of uh, sitting around uh, hour after hour, just kind of playing around with things and finding things that work? Yeah, and I think the obsession that goes with the psychedelic experience, like, in other words, sometimes, you know, if, if we're in a, just a normal sober state, we'll hear something, you go, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then, but it doesn't take on this gleaming importance. Mm. In a psychedelic state, I would imagine, because, you know, who knows if I have experience in that sort of thing. But, you know, who, who would imagine, you know, um, I mean, uh, in a psychedelic state, details become highly amplified, apparently. So what happens here is that uh, uh, he probably followed the trail, like, very intensely, you know, very intensely. And I'm talking about, right now, I'm talking about uh, Norwegian Wood. Yeah. Because he was, he was starting to trip by then. So I think a lot of it had to do with drugs, basically. Ah. That he, he a, a line became so important that it had to be followed through to its end. But that that one lick is just amazing, considering the times. It's yeah. truly an amazing lick. I mean, who would think of that? <laughs> John Lennon. So now, when the same spirit, not as complex, but definitely in the same spirit, what we have is a D chord with a descending bass line. So we have D, C, B, B flat. All right. This is first verse we're looking at, right? Yeah. Now let's take a look at the finger picking for a second. So we have two lines going on. One is an oscillating bass, which is just simply going. And then another line that's going. And if we put those together. All right. Now once, once you develop a hat, I, I teach like a, you know, a quick 10 minutes or less, learn how to do this type mm -hmm. of thing call it my patented learn how to finger pick in 10 minutes or less system. Um, once you get the habit of that down, then you could do variants on it. All right. So in other words, if I take a G chord, I can, instead of going like, I can oscillate. What he's doing here is using all, using all the strings on the guitar, really, 
yeah. at some point in this pattern. And then in the C chord, I could go. So, and again, using all the yes, yeah. using all the strings. So the reason I bring this up is because technically, uh, Lennon is not doing this. If you notice in the song, there's an incredible sonority in that guitar. And the reason why is, this song is in the key of D, he took the E string down. So he did a drop D on it. He did a drop D, what they call a drop D, and he's doing this now. I'm sorry. And then we get... Um, That's where we, we get that deep sonority. You could really hear it. You could really hear it in this, and it's uh, recorded so well that. You know, deep. McCartney, brilliant. That one note is just so amazing. All right, so uh, I don't usually teach the. Uh, drop D tuning to my students, it just complicates things. If they could get this down automatically, right. I'd rather them get that. And I always tell them, once you can control it, then you can control things for stuff like Blackbird, which yeah. doesn't doesn't span five strings, but you get stuff like this. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so we have this D chord. Now, what's happening here is I'd have to, like, get another finger and go like this, but he's not doing that to get this note. What he's doing is he's going like this, and out of laziness, bringing the first finger up, this leaves the G string open. And what this is really, it's a uh, G uh, major 7, rather than a D over B, it's really a G major 7, and then this is a... a See if I can grab the bass. This is the implication here. What this is is a this isn't a chord I, I normally play. This is like finger yoga here, but I'm trying to get the sound. This is a, a, a G minor chord. Here's the B flat. G B flat D is G minor. Here's the B flat, but it's got a major seven in it, which is normally found in in um, in major chords and never in minor chords, except in jazz and in other places like that. This no. is where you get the sound, like uh, say you have a song in the key of... That kind of sound. This is a minor major 9 in this case, but I have the major 7 in there. The 9 doesn't matter that much except it's just simply embellishing, but here's my major 7. Okay. And that's what gets... Yeah. You know, and a lot of spy music is based exactly. on that, you know, sure. that whole trip. So, um, Cartoon. Yeah. So really we have a D, a D over C, which means D with a C bass. Here we have a, a G major 7 over B, which is, means a G major 7 with a B bass, right? And then, and this is a G minor major 7, all right? So that's the technical words. All you got to know is here's your first chord, here's your second chord, here's your third chord, and here's your fourth chord. Yeah. All right. So, um, then he goes to C, G. All right, so we have that. Basically, that's the main body of the song. Then he does a, a, a transitional uh, middle eight. Uh, look around, round, round. Look around, round, round. Look around. How is that? 
what he does is he does a D, then he goes to the F shape making a G chord. Here's from the F, and he's right, right. here. We get. So we got D and G keeping our, our ostinato bass pattern here. And he does that twice. D, G, A, G. Then he goes down to. That's a D minor 7 right there. And then he's been experimenting with diminished seventh chords, who probably Harrison introduced him to. Hmm. Right? Now that may sound a little off. I know it's a diminished yeah. seventh, but it's implied in there, and I could hear it in the bass. It's just, um, I used to do this one. Uh, And, and stuff like this. So I, I, you know, my inversion sounds a little weird. But if I were to do it like this, then we get our line, right. which is in there anyway. It's embedded. All right. Uh, that's about it for the song. And then there's, uh, you know, oh, uh, he does this thing where he. Um, he goes into halftime with the chord movement. Right now it's like uh, one, two, one, two. So every two comes. Now it's going to be in halftime. One, two, three, and. Lengthen it by twice. I'm getting chills. This is so beautiful. So that's interesting there because when you hear the original fade-in of that line, we don't hear these first two chords, mm -hmm. but at the ending he brings it in. Now, this is an odd little, this is actually a sixth chord shape. Mm -hmm. Which implies a D6 and a C6. Then he goes to D, C, G, and then he follows through with his original opening. Which we never hear. We never hear him get to that. But all right. So uh, that's dear Prudence. I wanted to get to glass onion, but I know we're not going to have time. Oh, we aren't. So, uh, but dear Vinny, thank you for coming out to play today. Absolutely. Yeah, and Absolutely. Uh, we will. Uh, in two weeks, we will come back to the Beatles. In two weeks. All right. Thanks. Peace out. Okay.